Hi, I'm Louise Milligan. I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Biology at Western and also currently Associate Dean Administration for the Faculty of Science. My husband, Gordon MacDonald, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's-related dementia in December of 2010. Around 2008, we were involved in a car crash of which, unfortunately, I have no memory of. Uh, apparently, he made a turn into a FedEx truck. Um, at the time, he was quite concerned about why he would do such a thing. That made no sense to him. He was aware that his mother had dementia and was worried that maybe this was the beginning for him. Once we got through that car crash, he made an appointment with his family doc and expressed his concerns and underwent a CAT scan. And apparently at the time, he told me that everything was, was fine. There was no, no need to worry. And so life went on. And there were a few things that sort of made me wonder about if everything was good. He had some trouble finding words. For example, um, he would talk about, you know, the guy who flies the plane, what's he called? It's like the pilot. Oh yeah, yeah, the pilot. I don't worry about that too much because we all have those times when we forget the words. And then he would do strange, make strange decisions, like for example, cancel a lecture in order to get his snow tires put on. Like, what was that about? So it was very clear that, that something wasn't quite right. So the doctor did an assessment, the mini mental tests, you know, we subtract seven from a hundred and rolled backwards and he couldn't do any of those things and he couldn't draw that clock showing ten to two. And at that point, my heart just sunk. On our drive home from Guelph, we stopped for coffee because I was quite rattled and I needed to just take my breath. And he, so we were chatting a bit about what this means and, and he was quite matter of fact about it because he knew that this was dementia and that it was going to be a hard journey for both Emily and Annie, our children, and myself. And that basically that we, I was to make the decisions and knew it was necessary to keep our life moving forward. And to this day, I thank him so much because he gave me permission to make those tough decisions. Lori well, read in the paper one day about um, subjects needed for a clinical trial related to memory issues. And he cut it out. And when I came home, he said, I think this would be a good thing for me to get involved with. What do you think? I said, absolutely. And it was really good. It was good for him because he felt he was doing something and he really took great joy and pride in that. And even to the end, when he was asked whether or not he would consider donating his brain so that they could then do the firm diagnosis, as well as look at how his, his brain had reacted to the disease, he was absolutely for sure. He said, I'm not gonna need it. So he was happy to donate his brain. And, and that speaks to the scientist in him, I think. For me, the best way to cope with this is to share the story for others who find themselves on this difficult journey and to know they're not alone.